My channel focuses on unveiling and narrating criminal cases in East Asian countries, especially in China. When it comes to China's criminal history, Ai Baoshan holds a significant position. Between March 1996 and August 1997, he committed a series of violent crimes, including the murder of 15 individuals, including soldiers, police officers, and innocent civilians. He also robbed over 1.4 million yuan in cash and killed two more people while in prison. After his arrest, he chillingly declared, I've thought about it. If the law sentences me like this, I will go out and kill. Hoof. I will kill those protected by the law. If the law sentences me to 20 years, I will go out and kill adults. If the law sentences me to life imprisonment with parole, and I'm too old to kill adults, then I will go and kill children, go to kindergartens to kill, as many as I can, until I can't kill anymore. Our story begins in 1983 when Bai Baoshan was sentenced to four years in prison for stealing clothes worth 10 yuan. Unfortunately, during his imprisonment, he was caught stealing corn, and in the process of being apprehended, he used a wooden stick to strike the head of the person chasing him. Consequently, his charge was changed from theft to robbery, and he received an additional 10-year sentence. This incident fueled his resentment, becoming one of the reasons for his revenge against society. Before incarceration, Bai Baoshan worked as a loader and unloader at the first exploration field in Shijingshan district. During his time at the factory, his quiet nature didn't leave a lasting impression on others. However, during a militia training session, he surprised everyone by achieving an excellent score in live ammunition shooting. Following this, he borrowed an air rifle from relatives and began hunting birds in nearby woods after work. A year later, his marksmanship became extremely precise, with birds falling within 15 to 20 meters without a miss. Late at night, he would use the air rifle to target and kill running mice. This continued until Bai Baoshan got married at the age of 23 and had a pair of twins a year later. However, the poverty in family life deeply affected Bai Baoshan. Combined with his heavy smoking, solitary personality, dark inner thoughts, and the influence of his surroundings, he escalated from petty theft to stealing bicycles, collaborating with neighborhood children to commit burglary, and breaking into factories to steal raw materials and finished products. His dark territory expanded, but his awareness of family did not diminish. Yet, his return brought trouble to the family. Housing was the immediate issue. The two cottages in Beishinan were once the shared home for him, his wife, and the twins. However, after his imprisonment, his wife divorced him, taking the children and remarrying. Now, his brother's wife and daughter live there. Initially, Bai Baoshan stayed at his mother's house in a unit in the Mashiku residential area of Beijing. He wanted to start a small business and learn to drive, but both required solving the household registration problem. Accompanied by his brother, he went to the police station. There, he met a police officer in charge of household registration. Bai Baoshan submitted his release certificate and related documents. The officer took the materials and coldly said, Your registration can't be done immediately, at least wait for six months. Bai Baoshan urgently asked, I have a release certificate, why do I have to wait for six months? The officer replied displeasedly, asking like this, You'll have to wait two years. Deeply frustrated, Bai Baoshan frequented the police station, repeatedly obtaining certificates, taking photos, and filling out relevant forms. However, as predicted by the officer, things were continuously postponed, and Bai Baoshan's household registration problem remained unresolved. During the year and a half he struggled with the registration issue, Bai Baoshan committed over 10 more crimes, leading to the death of 15 people. Coincidentally, the approval date for his registration happened to be the day before his last crime, where he killed his accomplice. Later, Bai Baoshan's registration was revoked, and his cancellation date was approaching. Upon Bai Baoshan's release from prison, he had once planned two paths for his life. Now, he believes the first path is blocked, leaving only the second path open. 
Driven by his vengeful mindset, he resolves to commit armed robbery, with the primary target being the police officer who had humiliated him. Rewind to 1991, the fifth year after the Xuanwu District People's Court sentenced him, Bai Baoshan was transferred to Xinjiang Shihizi Xian in prison for his term. Around 1992, he received a letter from his then 10-year-old daughter, pouring out her sorrows. Touched by the letter, Bai Baoshan wept and vowed to ensure a happy life for his child. Thus, he began secret preparations, recognizing that major crimes required more than just a lack of cultural knowledge. Despite his reluctance to study in childhood, he became determined during imprisonment, engaging in rigorous self-education, reaching a level where he could read books and newspapers. In by Baoshan's plans, the crimes had to involve weapons. He desired not ordinary firearms but powerful, convenient to carry ones with intense firepower. Additionally, he needed vehicles, advanced shooting techniques, and driving skills, all prerequisites for the initial preparations. However, within prison, he couldn't obtain firearms or learn driving skills. Still, he could study firearms knowledge and seize opportunities to collect bullets. Xinjiang's labor reform prison classified prisoners into two types, those confined at night, referred to as internal fry prisoners, and those not supervised at night, referred to as external fry prisoners. The latter had opportunities to interact with external farmers. Bai Baoshan capitalized on this condition, successfully purchasing rifle bullets, machine gun bullets, and pistol bullets, secretly hiding them. Nevertheless, obtaining bullets only solved one aspect of his premeditated criminal plan. He needed to familiarize himself with the performance and usage of firearms. At this point, he made full use of his roommate who had worked in a military unit before imprisonment. According to the roommate's recollection, Bai Baoshan showed a strong interest in various firearm models, displaying a profound curiosity. Bai Baoshan conducted these preparations in prison, cleverly concealing himself, leveraging his taciturn nature, and receiving praise for a period. In 1993, by Baoshan's third year in the far northwest, he was granted a one-year reduction in sentence. The most satisfying event for Bai Baoshan in prison was discreetly killing two bullies who had frequently tormented him. In September 1993, Li Baoyu, who herded cattle with Bai Baoshan, suddenly disappeared. Li Feng immediately investigated the case of Li Baoyu's disappearance. Li Baoyu had not taken anything with him, and he still had a year left until the end of his sentence. Logically, prisoners had no special reason to escape in such situations. Despite many suspicions, no other evidence was found. Eventually, the case was concluded with the verdict that Li Baoyu had run away. Bai Baoshan knew the truth about Li Baoyu's disappearance. About a week earlier, Li and Bai had a quarrel. Li Baoyu punched Bai Baoshan, who didn't retaliate. Li Baoyu said, Hey, quite a man, you dare not fight back. You make us Beijing people lose face. Bai Baoshan said, Okay, you wait, these days I will fight back and show you. The matter ended there. Li Baoyu thought Bai Baoshan was just talking and wondered how angry he could get. But he never expected that Bai Baoshan would start preparing the next day. Without saying a word, Bai Baoshan, carrying a shovel, secretly dug a hole behind the cattle shed, a hole about a meter long, a meter wide, and about two meters deep. He then hid 200 yuan in the wall seam of the cattle shed. When Fuk Jun herded cattle, Bai Baoshan found Li Baoyu and said, Um, my money, hidden in the cattle shed, can't dig it out. Well, you go help me get it out, my treat. Li Baoyu thought Bai Baoshan was deliberately pleasing him, so he followed Bai Baoshan into the cattle shed. He asked, where is it? Bai Baoshan pointed to the wall seam, and Li Baoyu bent down to look inside. The money was rolled into a ball and couldn't be picked out with fingers. Li Baoyu found a thin iron wire, bent it into a hook, and, bending over, helped Bai Baoshan dig. At this moment, Bai Baoshan stood behind him, quietly took out a pre-prepared iron hammer, and struck Li Baoyu on the back of the head. Li Baoyu rolled his eyes, 
fell to the ground without a word. Bai Baoshan then wielded the iron hammer, hitting Li Baoyu's head four or five times in succession. After Bai Baoshan watched Li Baoyu being beaten to death, he carried the body out of the cattle shed and threw it into the hole he had previously dug. Next to the hole was a shovel, and in three to five minutes, he buried Li Baoyu's body.